Welcome to the second episode of e-commerce office hours, where I answer some of your most common e-commerce questions. What amount do you mark your products up on each dropshipping website? So it really depends site to site. Honestly, on most sites, I'll mark every product up like 40 to 60%. This typically accounts for any increase in price on a supplier's website. If there are any in the future, but it also leaves me enough room for profit on Poshmark specifically, though, I often mark my products up at least 80%, sometimes even double them to a hundred percent markup simply because the fees on there are a lot more and I need a lot more wiggle room. How can you create a second Etsy account after getting suspended? So on any website, not just Etsy, the goal is obviously not to get suspended in the first place. The way you can do that is to simply understand how the platform works, know the terms of service and understand how to actually drop ship on there effectively. So when it comes to Etsy specifically, there's only two main ways really that I know how to drop ship within the terms of service service. So that's print on demand products and digital downloads. If you're drop shipping from other retail websites like Amazon or eBay or Walmart or even AliExpress, you're inevitably going to get suspended and you'll struggle to get any new accounts up that are running a long term on Etsy ever again. One workaround for this is to get an entirely new computer. So that way you have another internal IP address that's completely new, then set up a brand new Etsy account with that computer with a new name, a new credit card, email address, and then get a new phone number as well. So you can get the verification. Code. You'll need all of these to set up a new account and you can get a new phone number by using an app like text. Now, for example, I made a video on how to do this in the past. So if you want to check it out, I'll make sure to link it at the bottom of the description. What should you do if you're selling a drop shipping listing that's out of stock on your supplier's website, but you don't want to cancel it because it'll hurt your seller metrics. So regardless of the platform, a canceled order can obviously hurt your seller metrics and too many of them can even result in an account suspension. So if you're drop shipping and you go to process an order, order, but then you realize, for example, that your supplier's out of that product, there's a few things that you can do so you don't have to cancel the order. The easiest thing to do is to look for the same exact product on another website. Often you can find that same exact product selling on another website that's similar. If that doesn't work, then you can find a similar product that's extremely close to it, but slightly more expensive, and then message the buyer and explain to them that you're out of that variation, but you do have X variation, whatever that is, that's really close and even worth a little bit more and ask them if they'd be okay with that instead. Now, often because it's worth more, you'll find that they'll say yes. And if they don't, then you can simply apologize and kindly tell them that they can ask to cancel. Honesty goes a long way with a lot of buyers. So an approach like this is often well received. Plus on every platform, if the buyer asks to cancel first, then you accept it, it won't ding your seller metrics. But if all else fails, you can either fake ship it to them by using a tracking number service like Track Taco, for example. And I've done countless videos on this. I'll link one of them at the bottom of the description as well. Or you can ship them a cheap price product that you don't care about losing, then preemptively message them, explain that you just realized you accidentally mixed their order up with another order and you're preemptively refunding them and you're sorry for the convenience. That way it looks like you simply made a tiny mistake, but you're making it right and you're preemptively refunding them and also bringing it to their attention. And that way it also doesn't look like you didn't have the product that they ordered and you're just kind of pulling one over on them. Keep in mind, you don't want to abuse this approach, but it is an effective last option if you need it from time to time. When drop shipping on Facebook shops, is it better to list directly to your shop's commerce manager or use a Shopify store and connect your pixel? So I have shops that do both is the honest answer. I haven't found which one is definitively better yet. It seems like shops that directly list in the marketplace versus shops that check out on a connected Shopify website almost rotate month to month on which is better. It's extremely similar to the marketplace for shops debate too. In my experience, neither marketplace nor shop is definitively better. It seems as if Facebook throttles traffic to both whenever it wants. And when the other is up, then the other one is down and vice versa. How much money can you make drop shipping on Facebook marketplace? I would say it's probably close to six figures a year if you really scaled it up even still. Now, don't get me wrong. It's a lot tougher to do this and do big numbers right now because sales are down significantly right now from this time last year, but you can still make sales here. It's definitely still worth listing here. And I definitely think it'll come back with a vengeance at some point this year. But for the average person just looking for a side hustle and not really looking to turn this into like a full time thing, there's no reason that you can't make a thousand dollars to two thousand dollars profit a month drop shipping on Facebook marketplace. But just like anything, the more 
time you put into it, the more product research you do, and the better you get at it, the more you can potentially make. How many items can you list on Facebook per day when drop shipping? So whether you're drop shipping or you're just listing items to normally resell, you can list up to 150 products per day per account. I obviously don't recommend going right up to that limit though. I'd say max get up to 130 or maybe 140 with a fully scaled account. But in the very beginning, start with like 10 to 20 products per day and then maybe slowly add 10 to 20 products per day every few days. You want to build your listing limits up consistently so it looks normal. On Facebook shops, however, there is no limit. So you can list thousands of products per day. There's so many more tools to be able to do this like spreadsheet uploads, pixel connections from your website website and several other methods, as well as the tried and true manual listing method, just like Facebook Marketplace. Is it realistic to expect to make $1,000 profit per month drop shipping on Facebook Marketplace? So yes, I definitely think with the right products and consistent listing, there's no reason that you can't do that even right now. Which apps do you use to import your products to your drop shipping stores quickly? I personally use ZDrop to copy listings from suppliers directly onto the websites that I drop ship on. But I also use List Perfectly to cross post from my dropshipping sites a lot faster too. The truth is sometimes Z drops faster and sometimes list perfectly is. It just depends where you're listing from and what sites you're listing to. Can you effectively dropship other Amazon listings back onto Amazon on your own listing for the same product? So people actually do do this and I have heard that it works from time to time with the right products, of course, just like anything. It's called Amazon to Amazon dropshipping, but honestly, I don't have any experience doing it. And I'm pretty sure it's against the terms of service. Again, I don't know that much about it though. Where do you find the best products to drop ship? What dropshipping suppliers are the best? This is obviously going to depend website to website and, you know, product to product. But to give you a best one size fits all answer, simply see what's working for other sellers already selling on that platform that you're trying to, and then reverse engineer their supplier and list that. That's the quickest and easiest way for beginners to get a level of success. I really hope you got some value from this video. The goal is to make these as rapid fire as possible so you can get a lot of insight in a short period of time from the frequently asked e-com questions that are plaguing other sellers.